Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Matter, Level 1, Objects and Pieces. When you're looking at matter, the first thing that you want to do is always define the system that you're going to investigate. But the object for matter will be a black cube. And the reason why is not only is it made of matter, but if you just sit it there, it'll, it'll stay there. It doesn't have any energy, and energy will be another concept that we're going to get to in a, in a future video. Um, to learn more about matter, we're just going to look at common day objects that are made of matter, and we'll start to realize that all of those objects are made of smaller objects. We'll call those pieces, and if we put together the pieces of the objects in different order, then we're going to have different characteristics. After watching this video, you should be able to identify the pieces and characteristics in objects like these three Lego designs or in these Tangram uh, dice cups. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking as we look at these three sets of wooden objects and then you'll have a chance to do the same as you look at some anagram sentences. And so let me clean this up and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, going to define the system that we're going to investigate, which are these three sets of wooden objects. And I'm going to build the first object in that set. So this is the first object. I'm going to call this a double arrow. What I'm going to do is go through and write down the name of the object, the pieces in the objects, and then the characteristics of the object. So this object is called the double arrow. It's made up of four cubes, so wooden cubes, and then four of these triangles. And then the characteristics are, I'm just describing the object. In this case, I think it's kind of long and it's going to be pointy. So now let me rearrange these and look at the next object. Okay, so the next object, I would call this an octagon. So let me do the same thing. I'm going to go through, write down the name of the object, the pieces, and the characteristics. So this octagon, I would say, is made of the same pieces, four cubes and four triangles, but you can see that its characteristics have changed. Instead of being long and pointy, it's round and smooth. Let me do that again for the last object in our set. Okay, for this final one, what I do is I have two objects here. It looks like a little town, so let me write down the object, the pieces, and the characteristics. Okay, as we look at the object, the town, uh, it has the same number of pieces, four cubes and four triangles. What we see now is that in this big object, we have two smaller objects. We have two buildings, and one of them is pointy and one of them is smooth. So you can see that as I go through this, the same number of pieces are used to make multiple different types of objects. This will be really important as we start to look at matter and how matter is made up of different parts. We'll eventually call those particles and atoms, but for now, I I'd like to have you give this a try. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this off and then I'll give you another challenge. Okay, for this next challenge, we're going to look at these three anagram sentences or phrases. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the system. And then I'm going to set up the first uh, phrase and then I'll give you a chance to do this. Okay, so the first phrase is vacation time. So what I'd love to have you do is pause the video. There's some thinking slides down below that have all three phrases. And try to do what I did in the previous section where I defined the object, I listed the pieces, and then I talked about the characteristics. So pause now. Okay, so the first thing I do is go through uh, this first object, which is going to be vacation time. So let me define the object. So the object is vacation time. The next thing I want to do is I want to determine what are all the pieces that make up that phrase vacation time. So let me organize this. Okay, so I've got one V, two A's, a C, two T's, two I's, an O, an N, an M, and an E. So let me define those as the pieces.
Okay, so now I've listed all the pieces which are going to be these letters and the number of each of those pieces. And then the final thing I'm going to do is talk about the characteristic of this object. So this is a thing. It's a noun. So this would be a fun thing, vacation time. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it for the other phrases. I am not active, and then can I motivate? Okay, so for the second one, I'm not active. I have the same exact letters. Since it's an anagram, it's going to be the same letters. But now, since I put them in a different order, the characteristics are different. It's now a vacation of, uh, a description rather, of vacation time where you're um, not really <laughs> very active. You're not doing anything. Now let me do the final one. You can see that the letters are not going to change. So I'll just write that out. Okay, so for the final one, can I motivate? It's really a question. I'm asking myself a question about the vacation that I'm going to go on. Can I motivate myself to be more active during vacation time? So you can see that the letters are going to be the same. And by changing the order in which those pieces occur, we get a totally new characteristic. So I've done this already on looking at those wooden objects. We've done anagrams together. Uh, what you could do next is you could try the same thing. I've got these Lego designs that were made of the same exact Lego pieces. Or you could do the same thing, trying to determine if these are the same Lego uh, tangram pieces in these dice cups. So that's thinking in matter, level one, objects and pieces. And I hope that was helpful.